So we're here in your family cellar and you're one of the oldest and most important wineries in Malta. So founded in 1919, can you tell me a bit about your family history and the history of Maltese wine? Well, the family history is, is interesting because it started from, from nothing, from somebody who, who had very little, I wouldn't say nothing, but close to nothing. And from, from that small beginning, grew into something which is uh, to work today the largest winery in Malta, uh, harvesting about 60% of the grapes in Malta. Uh, so, you know, quite a transition from the first generation to the fourth. 101 years later, having been through uh, starting off at the end of the first World War to going through the second and coming out from the second as a probably the most established and the largest winery on the island. Um, being through four generations is, is a challenge in itself, uh, as, as, as most people know today in business. So that has brought with it its challenges and we've also through those many years changed our skin then many times and <laughs> from from being a small wine merchant at the first couple of years of the of the business growing as a wine producer always growing step by step um, into something bigger more larger scale in the till the, around the early 50s uh, later on with the help of technology was improving quality moving into buying our own estates in the 70s throughout the 90s and even to today planting new estates, managing the ourselves, um, producing our niche wines, you know, champagne method wines, method traditionnel, um, um, organic wines as an organic wine producer, um, and like sort of the traditional pasito style wines as well, with our own uh, indigenous varieties. We're also producing some very interesting wines from the Genosa, which is the Maltese. Yeah. A red variety and the Gregatina, which is a white variety. And so playing the role of a wine that's trying to be innovative, um, both on the aspect of winemaking, um, experimenting with new varieties which should grow in other parts of the world, seeing how they fare in our climate, and going through this, uh, this process of learning and uh, cultivating and practicing, keeping up with new inter international standards, always trying to, to be ahead of the game, at least on the local scene on our very little small island, which has uh, half a million people living in it and uh, consume quite a bit of wine, so have a good appetite. Um, but um, always trying to um, sort of appeal also to the Maltese as well as the, the tourism, which is fairly, fairly big. Um, the wine culture in Malta, I think over the many, many years, well, if we go as far back as the Knights. Yeah. So this is important, actually, if you're going to talk yeah. about the Knights, because this cellar was originally, it wasn't a wine cellar at first. So can no. you tell us a bit about the, the building, what it was originally built for, and the history of the Knights in Malta and how that kind of started yeah. part of the wine history here? Well, many of the, the, the grandmasters at the time were um, wine lovers, art lovers, and um, wine was very much a part and parcel of the, the lifestyle. And many grandmasters that Fra Manuel in the Venena, which had planted vines all over, and Gozo in particular, as well as Malta. And that tradition carried on throughout their, their ruling from 1535 to 1798. And then, and then things changed after that as the needs on the islands changed. Uh, Malta was under British rule as well. Uh, other other uh, crops were planted, wheat, uh, cotton as well and it was also used um, as an export uh, item. Uh, the, the wine culture suffered a bit at that point in time, obviously it always remained. Um, and then uh, after the, so the, the independence of Malta in 1964, uh, I think at that point in time, we look at the, uh, the following the 1950s, through to the 1980s and even more so, I would say the 1990s was the, the beginning of this uh, more quality oriented winemaking uh, approach where uh, estate driven, um, uh, single vineyard uh, style of wines um, and pocket sized vineyards which are really very, very small. Water's already small. Imagine how small the vineyards are, you know, so 
um, all hand-picked uh, grapes around the island. Uh, family owned the state, so uh, we ourselves deal with 250 farmers, which is quite a lot of farmers when you consider the population of the island. You know, we get different quantities of grapes from different farmers, different varieties, many varieties planted around the island. So if you had to look pre, pre the 90s, I think you'd find maybe a totality of maybe eight to ten different varieties around mm -hmm. the island, whereas today there are at least 30, 35, so there's, there's quite a lot available um, to choose from as well. And, and the two most important native varieties from Malta, the ones that you mainly source from these small yes. farmers yes. And, and quite old vines, can you tell us about the white variety first? So, sure, um, Gergentina, <laughs> it's a bit of a tongue Gergentina. twister. Yeah. So Gergentina is a, is a white variety, which is, oddly enough, it's uh, harvested towards the end of the harvest period, so mid-September, which is uh, unusual. Um, it's a variety which uh, has a nice acidity to it, as, a, as you've noted in our, in our tasting, um, and it gives a very lean style and structure to the wine. It has great acidity, some nice fresh aromas to it. Um, it's our single variety that we have in Malta. Um, we use it in a number of wines, either as part of a blend or, or by itself. And there is a saying that it was planted by the Romans in the area um, of Gurgenti. So that's a part of Malta, where they say that's the origin of that variety. Interesting. That's a story that, uh, and that's a history that I know. Um, so that's that's the white. Uh, on the red is the Gelosa. 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 So that is, uh, that is um, again, the only uh, certified red variety that is Maltese and recognized in Malta. Um, that variety is also, well, the, aromatically reminds you of, uh, of Amarina cherries. So that's the most descriptive tasting of the commonly used in Malta. Uh, it's, uh, it's a thin skinned variety, so it's uh, uh, handled with care, both in vinification and at harvest time, making sure that you don't leave it for too long on the vine. We do go through the process where we try to uh, partially dry the grapes in, uh, in the sun or in a ventilated room for for more concentrated style wines, which we, we have Excellent. Uh, on our reds. And that's in particular, that's this label, the, yes. the Primus label. That's right. So where you're where you're sun, drying it in the sun for kind of three weeks to, to ramp up the concentration yes. and, the, and the intense cherry yes, and chocolate a, aromas. That's, that's the aim. It's a bit of a gamble because we, we dry it outdoors. The Gelosa needs to be because of the thin skin. Uh, we do it in the beginning of September. It's a bit of a gamble because if you get rain like we do in Malta in September, it's very common. Uh, and you get a lot of humidity with southerly winds coming into the mm -hmm. island. It can uh, ruin all your, all your harvest. And we have lost a good nine tons one, one year. So I had uh, this black rot all over the grapes. So I throw that away. <laughs> skip, uh, skip that year. And, uh, learn from it and well there's so much you can do in nature really dictates just hope for the best Absolutely. it's a variety we're, we're proud of and we, we obviously work with always trying to produce uh, new styles of wines with this, with this and we just tried your lovely sparkling um brut rosé made, right. made from the variety too yeah. so it's, it's clearly one that has adapted very well and can be used in in lots of different yes. styles here what about international or new varieties because your family have in particular found some varieties that work very yes. well. Well, since the 70s we've been experimenting with varieties, with the, as is commonly done, we have a, in our case we, we do it actively, and since the 70s we've been uh, rotating the vines in this particular vineyard that we have, a small mm -hmm. small parcel of land, and you know, so we've, we tried and tested Chenin Blanc, that worked out pretty well. So we have that planted in a number of vineyards around the island. And then we, we've done the same. We've actually tried, again, we started, we've tried Pinot Grigio, we've tried Sauvignon Blanc. We kind of like imagined it wouldn't work out well. But we said, no harm in trying. So we tried it and it didn't work out well. So we, we, <laughs> now you know. Now we know, <laughs> box tick, never do it again. Um, after that, from that, we moved on to Malbec. And, um, which is what I'm drinking, yes, which has turned out very well. So very you think Malbec might be uh, an exciting new direction for Malta yes. wine? Yes, I think so. I think if you're looking for varieties that grow really well, and Malta international varieties are two which really stand out. There are a number, 
but Malbec and Merlot are those two. Um, Malbec, I would, I would say, has, has a, you know, a really interesting uh, style to it. Uh, produces very good acidity, uh, uh, depending on the vineyard. But we've tried it in two different vineyards now. Relatively low pH, which is which is great too as well. Mm. Um, so we're very optimistic about it. Um, as time will tell, but <laughs> something else might come up in a, number, in a few years' time as we look to, to experiment with something else. Super. And how do you see, um, beyond kind of the, the, the wine styles and varieties, how do you see the, the business of the Maltese wine production industry changing? Is it something that people are paying more attention to? I know you sell all of your wines here and sell out most years obviously this year is a, a different, year. different year but um but you've seen demand increase do you think this is something that will in increase in malta wine production or do you think it's naturally limited it is limited um however it, it's difficult to say because the recent years have shown that that you know there's a lack of grape supply but that's because our tourism levels doubled and consumption went up um, what it will be like in the next two to three years is difficult to say. Mm. I certainly think that it's m m always going more towards quality, and uh, certainly the grapes that are being grown are always getting better, and that the wine that's being produced is always getting better as well. So it's certainly a, a country which is, is it's a, not a question of volume, but uh, and the only way to go is 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 the quality road. Um, choosing the right varieties, making sure you're planting the right varieties, which at this point in time we've learned quite a lot about over the last 20 or 30 years. Um, so I'd say that it's, uh, it's all a question of um, uh, going for quality. Uh, also with that, uh, the maintaining the, the interesting story that we have that all the grapes are hand-picked. There's no mechanical harvesting, it's small plots of land will tend to make them more manageable. Uh, not necessarily more economical, but more manageable, more direct attention to that particular vineyard, more as small as it's accessible. There are many advantages to to our to our smallness. You know. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I think I think your your smallness is 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 part of the important part of the story because yes. it makes the the wine so much more unique and, and artisanal in production. I mean, your biggest vineyard is seven hectares, which in international yes. scale is absolutely tiny. So the water is ginormous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I think, and all the wines that we've tasted from the the sparkling through to the white and the reds, it shows really nice quality and something that you just love to drink while you're here particularly yes I, uh, that is well that's the our aim is to try and give our signature to our to our style of wines using our indigenous varieties um, and then seeing how they get on with the international varieties trying to make uh, interesting blends with them as well so uh, choosing the right international varieties pairing with our local indigenous varieties gives us uh, our own style our signature as a as a region as a you know, go to Italy, you find every little region has its own variety. Mm -hmm. But we are, and by in that respect, a, a tiny region. In the when one looks at the global scale, and with that, we need to have something. We can't just be another country producing more Merlot, more Cabernet. We have to be looking at well, something that's unique. And my last question is probably the hardest. What would you say is that signature of Maltese wine? Uh, the signature of Maltese wine. I think is I think as uh, you mentioned it before, there's a little slight saltiness to, to the mm, wine. That nice uh, salinity. That precious. salinity that mm. comes uh, from obviously the, the positioning geographically. Uh, naturally, there's uh, the the question of the um, the heat, which you can you can see it, but it's not it's not massively present. Mm. But we don't, as a country, tend to produce very big style wines. We're not really down that road. As a winery, we've more from being influenced by the French winemaking style. Over the many years, we've had that sort of influence and that, that sort of respect towards towards being done in the, in France and obviously in Italy as well. So um, we're always looking for balance, not looking for massively overpowerful wines. Um, uh, our indigenous varieties, especially the red, doesn't tend to produce uh, full-bodied wines. Uh, unless obviously uh, partially dried in the sun, then you, then you can get that mm -hmm. out. Um, and I think it's, it's, you get a bit of sun, you get that, that salinity like you mentioned. Um, 
and also you know uh, this, I think you tend to find that there is also a good sense of, of fruit uh, as we tend to be a quite a big white wine drinker and rosé drinker I think Mortal does produce some very interesting rosés from the from the way that the reds produce very interesting red wines in Mortal mm-hmm. Our rosés and Malta are quite interesting as well. And the Maltese drink a lot of rosé, and and the, the white wines with the Maltese tend to have to be um, quite uh, quite Mediterranean style. Excellent. Yeah, I think that was a great description, and uh, I perfectly agree. And cheers to that. Cheers. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Pleasure. Cheers.